Today we will discuss about the MRI findings of different stages of hemorrhage. This graph shows uh, the initial stage of a future graph that I will show you. The right arrow is will show you the T2 intensity and the upper arrow will show you the T1 intensity. So in case of T2 intensity, the nearest portion of the arrow will be hypointense and it will gradually become isointense and then hyperintense. And in case of T1, it will again become hypointense, the nearest area of the arrow and gradually it will be isointense and then it will be hyperintense. Okay. Now we will see some special properties of magnets. There are some diamagnetic substances which usually do not try to be influenced themselves by the external magnetic field. Deoxyhemoglobin is such type of structure. And paramagnetics are the materials that are usually affected by the external magnetic field and can be aligned by the direction of the external magnetic field. And methemoglobin and oxyhemoglobin are paramagnetic substances. The ferromagnetics are very uh, special substances which is strongly influenced by the external magnetic field. In this table you will see the different st magnetic st field direction of paramagnetics, diamagnetics and the ferromagnetic substances. Here you see that the ferromagnets are strongly aligned according to the external magnetic field but the, di by, but the diamagnetics, diamagnets are not along the external magnetic field rather they are they are uh, reverse to the, the to the existing external magnetic field. This graph will show you the easiest technique of memorizing the stages of hemorrhage. You see, the central part of the oxy uh, of the blue dot is in bracket. There is written as immediate. When there is hemorrhage, oxyhemoglobin state is still uh, in that area. So oxyhemoglobin, uh, it will be isointense in both T1 and T2. Okay. Now, after one to two days, the oxyhemoglobin will be converted into deoxyhemoglobin, and it will be hypo in T1, uh, T, uh, hypo in T2, but iso in T1. And methemoglobin, they lies into the cell. So the external magnetic field cannot influence them that much. So it will still remain iso, uh, hypo in T2, but it will be hyper in T1. And after some time, the methemoglobin will be released from the cell into the outwards. And that will be very much influenced by the external magnetic field, both in T1 and T2. So it will be hyper intense in T1 and also in T2. And the ferromagnetic, you know, it will be strongly influenced by the external magnetic field. So it will be hypo in both T1 and T2. So this graph is very important. If you can remember this graph, then you can easily stage the different stages of hemorrhage. Now you see, we will show you the real patients, real images, MRI findings of brain and of different stages. The first one is hyperacute. You see, this one is iso in T1 and hyper in T2. And the acute, this one is iso to hypo in T1 and hypo in T2. Hype early subacute, this one is hyper in T1 but iso in T2. And the left subacute, this one is both um, always hyper in T1 and T2 and the chronic this one is hypo in T1 and hyper in T2 okay forget them now let's try to remember the graph again you see the central part of the graph which is immediate that is hyper acute stage as the blue dot lies at the central part of the graph it means that it will be iso in in T1 and slightly hyper in T2 though I have shown that it is hyper in acute hemorrhage, you see the blue dot is near the T1 line, that means it will be ISO in T1, but the T2 level it will be very low and it will be hypo in T2. And the early subacute, it will also be hyper in T1, as there is, you know, the methemoglobin is still into the cell, not extracellular. So 
only the T1 will affect them and T2 will be hypo to iso. And in late subacute, the methemoglobin will come outside the cell and it will be influenced both in T1 and T2 and it is hyper in both T1 and T2. And the chronic, the last one, it's, it is hypo in T1 and it is hyper in T2 as you know the ferromagnetic substance. Next we will locate how to locate a lesion.